So as you can probably guess by the credits today, this video is gonna be a little bit different. And the whole purpose of this channel has always been how to differentiate ourselves as pen makers. And really, as the, as the slogan is, 10 minutes to better pen making. So what I realized is I've got a network of a lot of friends who I think are the best around. And so over the course of the next few months, you might see a couple more people doing guest hosting on this and showing us a little something that they do that's different from everybody else. So today we're starting with John Underhill. And John is by far, in my opinion, the best casting guy around. You've probably seen his blanks, all the pheasant feathers, and some of the unique things that he did. But today, he's gonna to be doing a little something different. He's gonna be talking to you about how to do custom finials. And I think this is just in prep for him to start his own channel on casting. So watch over the next few months. Hopefully we can all talk John and uh, creating a couple videos on the way that he does his casting. But with that, we're gonna get over and we're gonna talk a little bit about finials and I'm gonna throw it over to John. Here you go, John. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm John Underhill. This is Underhill Creations. This is where I like to play. Uh, I'm here today to show you how I make custom finials. So for me, a custom finial, which is the piece in the top of the center of the cap here, um, it allows you to add your own personal touch to a pen. Um, we all buy the same pen parts from the same manufacturers. It, this allows me to make my pen a little different than the guy next door. Uh, maybe you're at a craft show or, or a, an art festival and you're trying to sell pens down the aisle from another pen maker. What this will do is allow you to add a little bit more to your pen, give a little more bling, a little more depth, and uh, differentiate yourself as a pen maker from somebody else. So it's fairly simple. Let me show you how I do it. Okay, so here's an example I want to show you of, of when you would want to make a custom finial and when you wouldn't want to make a custom finial. So this first pen, as you can see, has the bling on top. Now this isn't something you'd want to take apart because that's what's adding the extra complement to your pen. So this is abalone shell with a mother of pearl watch face and watch parts. If I were going to add a custom finial, I would want to choose a, a a pen kit or a component set that didn't have all this extra bling. There's no point in spending the extra for that if you're going to remove it. So on this one you can see this was just the standard Junior Gent and it had a cap similar to this one only it was it was gold in the center and by removing that what it allows us to do is it allows all of this pen blank to kind of transfer through the metal parts so as you move the pen, you get to appreciate that blank all the way through. And this is my uh, Mother Nature uh, resin cast. Now this isn't just for acrylic, you can also do it with wood. So on this one, it was a, a maple pen blank that I turned down below bushings and then I applied feathers and recast. And I, I added wood to the top and bottom here, uh, but we'll focus on the finial. It allows us to add a little X accent, so I allowed the wood to kind of match the brown and the feathers. And it just gives it a little extra something. So, something to make it different than everybody else. Okay, now here's the supplies you're going to need in order to pull this off. Besides your normal lathe and a chuck to hold this, uh, you're going to need some two-part epoxy, and I like using Loctite five-minute stuff. Um, you're going to need some sandpaper and you're going to have to, to either have a scrap piece from your blank that matches your, your uh, either your pen body or maybe you're going for something that stands out a little different but uh, for this we've got all these little scraps we've been keeping over the years these little cutoffs and this is a perfect example of how we can put them to use now if the blank is long enough and will fit in the chuck you won't need to do anything else this one would be close I would probably still glue it down uh, but this one obviously is not thick enough to uh, get us to where we need so because some of these edges are going to be what we're touching the mold they're going to be pretty smooth and they may have some mold release on them what you're going to want to do is rough that up with some sandpaper I've got a small piece of 240 and we're just going to scuff the bottom up or the edge that you're going to glue down there that way it's not shiny anymore and it's got a little bit of a little bit of a uh, the surface, a texture to the surface for that epoxy to work with. Um, next, we're going to choose a piece of wood, a block, and for this I have some maple cutoffs. 
These were some uh, three-quarter inch hard maple that I were fairly straight grain, so I, I cut them into these little blocks to assist me whenever I want to do this project. You don't want to use something that's soft. I would I would avoid pine or anything that's gonna that's gonna crush or dent when you tighten the jaws of your chuck. So for this maple seems to work very well. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this two-part epoxy on the paper here. You want to mix this up. I usually do these on these post-it notepads just because I can peel it off and throw it away after I've used it. We'll get this good and mixed. Right, and then you're just going to take a fair amount and you're going to put it over top of your block. And because I have a little extra here, I'm going to put some on this. Smooth it around a little bit. You want a nice bond because the last thing you want is for this to come off when you're turning it. Alright, and we're just going to take that and we're going to apply it to where it starts to squish out. But you don't want to push it so hard that all of the, the epoxy squishes out because then you don't have anything left to complete the bond. So you may want to position this, slide it one way or the other in order to get the center where you want it based on the colors that are going on here. But there's a lot of character going on in that piece, so we're not going to worry about it. Now this is something you'd want to do a day ahead of time. What you're going to have to do now is, even though it's five minute epoxy, I think it, it's more or less, it, you have five minutes to get it into place, but you still need to let it set up and cure. So I always like to give it overnight, a uh, good 24, 20 to 24 hours to let that cure properly. Alright, so for this next part, what we need is a scrap piece of wood. And I've got this block that I use on my drill press anytime I need uh, a backing. Uh, it's, it's thick. It doesn't have to be. It only needs thick enough to drill a hole maybe uh, a half inch in for this cap to set in. Uh, because this is tapered, because these sides are tapered, it's going to allow us to use an, a number of drill bit sizes that we have readily available. Now you can use a drill bit that fits the barren, the top of the barren. Uh, cap and that is a 29 64 it's a little small so I've um, I've opted to use this one which is a 15 30 seconds and that's going to give us a hole just to allow us to set the cap in and punch that center out so in the bottom of these caps you can see they're all compression fit that little silver plate has been kind of pushed in like a rivet. So we're gonna we need to drill a hole so that we can hit that rivet to, to remove this chrome plate, but we need it to go somewhere, so we need a hole. Alright, so now we get a hole. It's gonna have some rough edges on it, so I just take some sandpaper, rub over the top a little bit clean it up and now we're ready to go okay so we've got our hole drilled the next thing we're going to need is a hammer and a punch and this is just one of the punches from my uh, punch set that will fit inside now I want it a little bit larger than that uh, a little bit larger than that bottom rivet that way it gives me some stability in the rod. If it's too skinny, the rod may bend if that's if if you have to hit that too hard. And uh, I don't want to I don't want to get the rod stuck in a hole. So I always go just a hair bigger because once you get that down flush, it usually pops right out. So we're going to place this in a hole. Now, if you're concerned about the wood marring up the the piece, you can put a piece of felt down, something like that, to cushion the metal. Um, I've never really had a problem with it because you're not going to have to work that hard at getting it out. So you're going to want to just place the rod in there and pop this out. And now we've got our pieces taken apart. So, so next what you want to do, take a razor blade, the corner of it, and just scratch the, the bottom plate around this hole 
If you use sandpaper, you're liable to hit the top edges, which are going to be visible from your finished pen. So I just use the very tip corner and I get in there and I scratch the plating. I don't know if it's needed or not, but what I want to do is I want to give, give my epoxy something to hang on to, something a little harder, a little easier to get in. So with a few scratches in there, I think the epoxy will hold a little better. Okay, so after our epoxy is set up for a day, we know it's good and solid, good and dry. We've let all this cure properly. Now we're ready to turn. Now if we weren't using colored resin, if we were using wood, a suggestion I'd like to make is write the name of the wood on the side of your, your column here. That way you know. This is box elder burl. There's still plenty, enough, plenty of, of uh, material here that I can use at a later date if I need to. And it's already glued up. So uh, this is something I used on a, pre on a past pen. But I kept it because if I need another piece I can probably get at least one, maybe two more center uh, finials out of that or maybe a, uh, a center band ring. So something to think about. Now what we're going to do, I've got these long jaws on. Um, whatever you're comfortable with, obviously if you're using something with a shorter jaw you may have to reduce the length of your, of your wood piece here. So we're going to feed this in, tighten it up. Make sure everything is lined up right. Want to make sure that everything is free and not hitting the tool rest. And then uh, the first thing we're going to do is turn this down. We're going to start out. Uh, you can do this with whichever tools you wish. Uh, that I'm using um, carbide, easy wood carbide tool on this. We're going to knock it down real quick get it close to where we need it and then we'll take an accurate measurement and uh, go from there. Okay, one thing I want to point out is I didn't turn the acrylic all the way past my glued edge. I want to leave as much of this glue, glued surface together as possible. So if I were to keep turning down into the wood, I'm going to weaken that bond because I'm going to have less surface glued. So I always just work out here at the, at the front end of the acrylic or the, the glued object here. And then as I, as I work down and knead it, then I'll get closer to the wood. But I have found that the more material you remove, the weaker that bond is going to get. So you take a chance of that flying off before you get a chance to finish it. So now that we've got it rounded over, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get more of an accurate measurement on uh, what we need. So I'm going to use these calipers and I'm going to show a, a 10.63 millimeters or 10.62. Uh, it isn't that big of a deal to have calipers. What you can do if you don't have calipers, and I'm going to lock this in place now so that I know this is where my jaw edge is. If you don't have them, you can keep measuring this, kind of touching it out here as you work. It may take you a little longer, but it can be just as accurate. Let's turn this down a little bit more. still a little proud. We're close. just there. Alright, so now the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to face this. So, because our finials aren't flat, we're going to give it a little bit of a profile. Now obviously you can do whatever works for you on this. For me I like to have it a little, a little bit of a profile. So I'm going to move the camera.
there. That way we've got a little bit of a of a taper from the front from the front here and then it rolls back. So it's it's more at an angle than it is just flat. All right, this next bit may be a little hard to see. My hands might get in the way, but we're going to move all of this, get it out of our way. And then we're going to come in here. We have to put a finish or or uh, finish the surface of the blank. We have to polish it up, shine it, whatever we're going to do, because once we part that off, we're not going to be able to do that so easily. So first thing you're going to find is right here in the center, there's just a little bit of a bump, and that's because you found true center. So first thing we want to do is take a little bit of sandpaper, lightly sand that down, and I'm going to start with a 400 grit. We're going to turn the lathe down a little less than half the speed here, and I'm just going to lightly sand this off. feels nice. And then what I always like to do is switch to some extra fine steel wool. And we'll turn the lathe on high and we'll hit that. Now at this point you can either switch straight to if you want to put a quick finish, like a CA finish on it, or we can go through our uh, micro mesh and wet sand and build that up. I'm not going to make you sit here while I go through all of that, so let's just add a quick finish. We'll put a little bit of uh, glue boost on that, a little bit of glue boost thin, and this way it'll just give us a bit of a shine, and you'll be able to see it a little better. I'm just going to take a paper towel. We're going to turn the lathe down low. drop on here. Short burst of glue dry. We'll put a couple on there. Obviously, if I were going to put this on a pen I were making right now, then I would probably, I would buff it, you know, make sure that I got all the scratches out, everything was real nice, get it to the finish that I want, and uh, this is really nice right now, it's nice and shiny. But, for the sake of this video, we're going to go straight to parting this off, and then uh, I'll show you how to apply it on your pen tube. Okay, so now we've got our rest back in place, and because this has such a large opening. When we part this off, we don't have to take it all the way down. What we can do is leave a post to kind of help us center it in our in our finial cap. So for uh, parting this off, I've got a small screwdriver that I've adapted to a parting tool on my grinder, uh, whatever tool you want to use. But because sometimes you're working with such a small area, depending on the parting tool that you have, you're not going to have a lot of room to get in there and work it. So uh, the next thing you have to figure out is how thick do you want this? I mean, there's not there's probably less than an eighth inch material in here, a shelf in here. So you're going to want to make sure that the edge of this at least sits level or maybe slightly above. You don't want to, I guess you can, but I don't like to recess them below this lip. So I want to make sure that I leave enough material to sit just level or maybe slightly above. So let's part this off. Okay, so as you can see, I've left a post in there, kind of holding it on. If I were to part that all the way off, it would have fallen to the floor, maybe gotten lost in some, some turning shavings, or gotten sucked up into the vacuum system if it were on. So I always leave a post, and then I'll go in with the razor blade, and I will place the razor blade against the back edge of the material, and then rotate this just enough to cut it off. It's hard to do without blocking your view. So we've trimmed that off. And now we've left a post on the back. And I'll show you how we apply that. 
Okay, so here's our piece now parted off. As you can see, we've left the small post here in the center. We didn't part it all the way flat. Now you can part it flat if you want, but what I like about that post is now we would mix up our epoxy and we would just put a couple dimples of it around this hole and then place our piece on there. Now that post centers it, helps it center itself. So now what we're able to do is push this down a little bit once the epoxy cures. We don't want to put too much that it squirts out the edges, the outer edges, because we don't want to have to worry about that messing up our finish. So use very little epoxy, just put a few drops in the center around this hole, that way the excess of it would go maybe in the hole here and less would come out the top. So something else to remember though, when you apply this to your pen, you're going to want to put the pen together first. Press all of these parts in place and the last thing you do is epoxy that center on. If you were to epoxy that center on first and then press a tube in, you, you stand the chance of damaging the top surface of this acrylic or whatever object you put in there. So always make sure that this is the last thing you do, epoxy in your cap piece after the pen is assembled. Well that concludes how we make a custom finial. I hope I was uh, clear enough for you. You don't need any special tools. Uh, calipers are helpful. Other than that, you just need a scrap, couple scrap pieces of wood and some little acrylic uh, and uh, a chuck on your, on your lathe. So hopefully uh, this will get you started in making your own custom finials and uh, help you make some one-of-a-kind masterpieces. So I'd like to thank Mark again for having me on his uh, channel. It's been a lot of fun and I hope to see you guys all soon. Thanks. So as I say, as always, with that, we thank you for watching the video. If you like us, give us a little like and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Maybe we can encourage John to get his channel going a little bit faster out there. And if you have any other questions, comments, things you'd like to see me cover or John cover, or if you want me to look for anybody else that you know has, has some expertise in, a thing, in an individual area, Give me a little comment below. I follow all my comments. I try to reply back to everybody. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day. This video made possible by the fine folks at Exotic Blanks. For all your pen making needs, Exotic Blanks has you covered. Find them at www.exoticblanks.com. And also by Pen Makers International, the educational source for pen making.